Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you uh, to Resource Rising Stars for the opportunity of speaking today. Um, for those um, of you who don't know, we should also mention uh, that today uh, the Resource Rising Stars founders, uh, Nick, Re Nick Reid and Sharon Reid, it's actually their wedding anniversary today. So uh, congratulations to them. I think we should give them a clap. What a, what a romantic day uh, for Nick to set up. Um, when you have a look at today's session, wow, what, a, what an amazing session. Um, I get the privilege of talking uh, before everyone else. There's some absolute doings of the industry here uh, today. Now, you're probably also wondering why is a non-executive director presenting the story on Andean? Um, I, I will come to that, and there's a very good and positive reason uh, for that. But for those who don't know, we are an exploration and development company with an amazing silver project in Chile. Um, we've only had this project uh, for six months. Now, I will go through the disclaimers very quickly. Uh, now, I will not have enough time to cover uh, the presentation today, so I do encourage you to come and see me. But what I wanted to give you is, it's my job here to give you a, a few key takeaways um, that are simple messages for you to know uh, about Andean. And also, just to give you an idea of what our strategy is. So I won't go, be going through so many geological slides. If you want to um, test me on those, you can come and see me at the booth. But some of the key takeaways, we are high grade and we are shallow. So we haven't drilled beyond 300 metres. And again, I'll show you slides that back that up. Scale. So in the six months that we've had this project, we've already doubled the resource. And then going on to, I'll jump to Newsflow Rich. The reason uh, that the CEO is not here today is because he is busy finalising the resource upgrade, which we have promised for September. Hence why I'm here today. Um, but that is that will be substantial and it is only the first of many resource upgrades that we've promised to the market. So September, another one coming in December and also another one likely uh, to come in 2025. For us to be able to forecast putting out resource upgrades and substantial ones means that we have a fairly good idea of what's sitting in the ground. And just remember there's 800,000 metres of drilling that has gone on at this project and most of it hasn't gone into resource. We have infrastructure um, and you can see on that image, you can see a little bit of wind power. There's a 550,000 tonne mill um, which is on warm idle. There's power, uh, there's a tailings dam with fully permitted, uh, full environmental permits, roads, uh, water, everything that you could possibly want for a restart. This will be one of the cheapest restarts. But let me make it clear, what we are about right now is drill, drill, and keep drilling, and convert into the resources, and then we will right-size the project. Uh, we have great Chilean uh, support, uh, whether that be from, uh, the, fed from the federal government uh, to the state government. Um, if you have a think about this project and think of Tasmania, it is the only mining project effectively in Tasmania. When it was up and running a number of years ago, when the silver price was far less than what it is today, it was nearly 80% of the GDP, so it's especially important. It's also silver, if you're a gold bull, and I'm sure there's lots of gold bulls here, you should be a silver bull. It has the same dynamics, except for one additional dynamic, which is its use. And if you're into solar power, which I'm sure you are here in the Gold Coast, solar is where a lot of silver is used. And right now, there is a deficit. Um, there's not enough supply of silver, so they're drawing from stockpiles. And one of the major silver producers in the world, Mexico, um, there's recently been some legislation passed to ban open pit mining in Mexico where a lot of silver comes out. Which leads me on to strategic, and I'll get back to the team. There are, we are surrounded by major silver companies. Um, where we are, we're right on the Argentine border. Um, you know, we know that we're in the right district and there are people moving in. And then finally, when you're looking at a project, you look at who are the team behind it. And there are a number of familiar names there. If you have a think of Bellevue, from $5 million market cap to $2 billion recently, 
uh, to Firefly, which I know uh, Steve is going to be presenting on shortly. Um, the CEO um, and other people involved have been in Northern Star and was actually the CEO was number four employee for Saracen. Uh, from myself, uh, Kidman Resources, which I've uh, presented many times here as a, and I was a non-executive director. Uh, Remelius, um, which I think is the best gold company in the world, but I'm conflicted as a non-exec director. And also to Mincor, um, who have presented here also. What, what the point is, is that we do know how to take projects from expiration into production and drive shareholder value. And if you follow the Lasson curve, we're right at the bottom of that Lasson curve where resource rich news flow is about to come out. So I won't go through the team again. Um, I've, I've previously discussed that. So a few investment highlights for you um, to consider. You know, we have 50 million ounces already in, res in resource uh, of silver equivalent. A third of that is in the indicator category. And as I said, this is high grade. Uh, so if you want to convert silver to gold, divide it by roughly 80 and you'll get the, you'll get the equivalent. So the indicated resource is nearly 10 grams per tonne. As I said, we have the infrastructure uh, in place here. We have an on-site lab, so we can turn around our own assays. Um, we have a workforce which is uh, 10 kilometres away. Um, we, have multi we have fully permitted. You know, the TSF, for instance, the government has approached us to use the tailings for road base. It's that benign. There is no sulphur uh, in the tailings. We have $6 million worth of critical spares, and we've inherited over $150 million worth of infrastructure already in place. In terms of the corporate overview, what you'll see here is that we've got a very tight capital structure. There's only 115 million uh, shares on issue. We're only just over 100 million market cap. And you can see there already in the six months, we've been pretty busy uh, with, with news flow from raising our capital, which will fund these drilling programs. We currently have two drill rigs on site um, working 24 seven. We've already discovered two new outcropping high grade veins that we are, we're, we are drilling and one that we're about to drill. Um, you would be shocked at what you can find when you, when you uh, prospect around this ground. This is an epithermal system, so the vein structures come out and outcrop its surface. So even people like me, who's a non-geologist, and I'll show you the photo, you can see these, you can see these outcrops. I won't spend too much time on the, on the silver market, other than, as what I said, it's in deficit. And if you've got solar panels, you've got silver. So we're in the southern part of, of Chile, in San, uh, so about 800 kilometres south of Santiago. Just a few little facts on, uh, on Chile. It's number one copper producer in the world, number two for lithium, uh, number two for molybdenum, and number four currently uh, for silver. But as I said, right across the border from us and less than 50 kilometres, we've got the world's largest mining companies uh, that have silver deposits right next to us uh, in Argentina. A little bit about the infrastructure there that we've inherited. You can see the bottom image. Uh, the mill is fully enclosed. It's been in an ambient temperature of about 12 degrees uh, for the last 12 years, so it's a magnificent nick. There's no uh, erosion um, that you'd normally see in West Australian mill infrastructure. The front end of the mill, the crushing circuit, can actually do two million tonnes per annum. The back end, which is the flotation, because uh, we produce a concentrate, does just over 500,000. So this sort of brings me to the strategy um, point I raised earlier. What is our strategy here, outside of drilling and growing the resource substantially, is we'll then look at right-sizing the mill. So if I was to put my crystal ball on, ball hat on, we'd be looking at at least 750 to a million tonne per annum back end, which is just essentially adding flotation cells. You can see the power is there. We've got a brand new filter press, for example. Uh, we've, we've, we've got two years of supply for the, uh, for the ball mill. It's all there ready, uh, ready to go. So a little bit about the Cerro Bayo and what's, what we call, it's in two districts. The first district is the Laguna Verde district, 50 million ounces uh, in Laguna Verde. And what you'll notice there, in purple 
is where the current resources are. The blue is uh, where the processing plant is and the green is where the tailings is. And we've already discovered just through uh, doing some uh, rock chip samples, some untested veins just south of the Tau Tau open pit. And when you're pulling up, uh, when you're pulling up examples of 34,421 grams per tonne silver and 169 grams per tonne gold, you can see why we're pretty excited about what we have. We've also discovered what's called Pegaso 7 that you can see up the top right in yellow, uh, where the, the rock chips, and we're now drilling this, but the initial rock chips that we, were, that we discovered, 16,500 grams per tonne got silver and 19 grams per tonne gold. So absolutely uh, amazing intersections. And with our, with our open pit, Tau Tau, what we're looking at there is, a, is an average grade, in, let's put it in gold equivalent, of around just over uh, two grams per tonne, which is actually quite a high grade gold mine. And what you've always, always got to consider uh, with open pits is the strip ratio. The strip ratio of this, so how much waste to ore do you move, is 0.8 to one. That's, so basically it's outcropping uh, at surface, and there are some amazing uh, intersections already that you can see in there, some very high grade uh, numbers, which I'll go through if you want to come and see me. One of the underground um, resources uh, that we have is Delia, and what we've inherited there is already infrastructure in place, so there's a decline, um, all the ventilation is there available for us uh, to use. It's less than 300 metres of drilling. We haven't even hit the, hit the bottom and you've got some amazing intersections already of five and a half metres at 868 grams per tonne silver and 23 and a half grams per tonne gold. So, you know, even if you're a gold miner and forget the silver, you've still got five and a half metres at 23 and a half grams per tonne gold. Amazing sort of intersections. We haven't even, we haven't even drill tested below 300 metres it remains completely open. The next part of the resource is called the Coyota vein, uh, and I'll probably get the pronunciations wrong, it's my New Zealand accent, so I do apologise. But there is already underground infrastructure uh, in place. And you can, so just like the previous, and look at that drill spacing. So we're converting that uh, into resources, and again, we got 4.3 metres at 782 grams per tonne silver, so that's nearly 10 grams per tonne gold equivalent, with another 13 and a half grams per tonne gold. All we need to do to develop um, that, that blob to the left is um, take the decline down about 600 metres, drive straight across into it. So again, you can see why this will be an exceptionally cheap restart with the infrastructure already in place. Now, I don't expect you to see the images uh, on the slide, it's, uh, it's way too small, it's not on purpose, so please come and see me. But in terms of what the message is here, we've discovered Pegaso 7, um, and one of the uh, better drill results was uh, six, nearly six metres at uh, 800 grams per tonne uh, silver equivalent. So we know we're onto a high grade structure. It's 600 metres by uh, 300 metres as it currently stands, and it's actually outcropping its surface. And you'd think that this area that's been mined for, for, for many decades, there'd be no new discoveries. Well, we have made uh, discoveries. And what you find is that these outcrops happen in vein swarms. And the Cerro Bay underground, which went for, for many years and was highly profitable on the right, was a vein swarm. We've just started to discover these at what's called Claudia and Droughtmaster. And there are some amazing uh, intersections in there with one minute to go. Um, and rock chips, you know, two and a half uh, thousand uh, silver and 91 grams per tonne gold. I said earlier, even a, a, a finance person like myself could discover these veins, and you can see there on the left, um, that's a Euros Hartley's analyst um, standing right beside one of those vein structures. And just a little bit to the right of him is another uh, repeat of that vein structure. So that's what we encounter. News flow, as I said earlier, besides drilling results to expect over the next few months, resource update imminent, another one in December and another one in the second quarter of next year. 
So you can see why we're all excited. Management, we are all shareholders. We've all put money in, into this company. We're completely aligned um, with all of our shareholders and we look forward to uh, giving you some pretty ex exciting results soon. Thank you very much.